In this video, I'd like to start pulling together some of the topics from the previous videos. Uh, those two major topics being the one of cybernetics and regulation and feedback, and the other being the idea of the neuron and AI. I'd like to pull them together in a pretty simple patch uh, just to ping a VCF queue and get the sort of pinged bubble sounds um, that, you, that are so common to the VCF queue. Um, just as a way of sketching out the process of at least conceiving of a neuron and the process of using integrators as envelope followers. We've used integrators uh, a bunch in past videos, but never really conceived of them as integrators. But I just want to start looking at the envelope follower as an integrator, A, just to sort of create more links with uh, math that you may or may not remember from calculus, and B, um, just because I think thinking of things through different lenses is always an interesting and very enlightening experience. So first off, we'll just start to build the basic neuron. So I'll start by taking um, a function from the dual transient generator here, um, dual time gen oscillator, has a couple different names in the surge universe, but Basically, it's just a dual, uni dual universal slope generator, um, but a bit reduced. And use that to go into our CV processor. And I'll take a low frequency square wave from the PCO, go into the CV processor as well, and a third PCO. This one not at low frequencies. And so we have these inputs, um, which you can think of as the dendrites of a neuron. And they go into the CV processor through these different weights. And this is the soma. This is where the summing action takes place. And then we take the output and go through the axon, which is to say the nonlinearity. And we'll use the peak here as a nonlinearity. Again, you can use the comparator. Um, you could even start to experiment with other nonlinearities in the system. The triple wave shaper is a nonlinear wave shaper. The bottom section of the wave multiplier is a nonlinear function. Um, so there are all sorts of nonlinearities you can play with in the system. But we'll just use the peak uh, to keep things simple. And we'll take the output of the peak to trigger the variable Q filter. And we'll take the bandpass of the variable Q filter and go into the input of the mixer. Okay, and so we can play with the weights here. Again, this third, uh, this oscillator, this PCO is, is gonna be much faster than the other two. It has a much higher range. But we can play with the weights, scale them either in a positive or negative direction. And that's all well and good. Now let's um, start playing with feedback to really get this machine, to really get this neuron to start thinking and learning and adapting. And I want to use an integrator to, as an envelope follower, to take times where the sound is very dense and start to pull back the frequencies of the oscillators um, to create more space in the sound. Um, we've basically sort of done this a couple times but I want to look at it through the lens of integration. Um, if you remember from calculus, um, integration is, uh, you can think of as computing the area under a certain curve or something. Um, but what we're basically doing is if we have the sounds coming in, we want to um, integrate the sort of mass of sound at any given time. And so as there's a denser sound, the output of the integrator will go up, and we can use that to lower the frequencies of oscillators or um, any other number of things. So this is basically just an envelope follower patch, but looked at through the lens of an integrator. Search system is full of integrators, um, slope generators, and the smooth generator are the most obvious uh, integrators. So we'll just use a slope, slope generator since we've used it a couple times now for this sort of thing. So I will take the output of the bandpass filter and go into the dual slope generator, and you can see it working there. And I'll have the rise all the way up, and the fall time here will control our integration time. And then so we can do a handful of things with that. We can take the 
output and use that to slow down this PCO. So if we turn this up again, And if we play with the fall time, by playing with the fall time, we lengthen the integration time. So we are going to capture the mass of sound in a larger window of time. We can also use this to, as a VCA, to sort of replicate adjusting the weights here. So what we can do is say, take this first input going in to the soma of the neuron here, and we can plug this into a VCA and take the integrator output and use that to open and close the VCA and have that come back in here. And what we'll have is we'll have this particular input flipped and inverted so that as the envelope follower increases, it's going to open the VCA, but in a negative direction from this function. Um, so this is basically like taking one of the dendrites, one of the inputs of the neuron, and adjusting the weight through this sort of feedback loop. And so uh, if we do that, then we start to get some fun things. Um, we can also take the peak output here and start to modulate the filter because right now we're just getting different rhythms at the same uh, pitch but what if we want a little more animation so we can also take different outputs from different parts of the neuron from either the soma or the axon, or even just take some of the inputs themselves and tie them, uh, do some frequency modulation of certain things. We can take the envelope follower out and use that to, I don't know, maybe speed up this. see it'll settle into patterns and then kind of go off and uh, again this is the idea of organizing of sounds organizing themselves it's a you could see it as a generative patch but it's not generative in the sense that there's some outside random function driving everything these are just the sounds patched back into themselves and organizing themselves into different structures and then sort of sketching out a terrain that they can operate in we can also play with a couple other things with integrators. Uh, let's say we want to do a little frequency modulation here. We can take the low pass output of the variable Q filter and go into the smooth generator. Smooth generator is an integrator, but unlike the dual slope generator, which has control over the rise and fall, this we only have the single rate control over both the rise and fall. We can use that output to do a little more modulation of the filter itself. <laughs> and control the rate control uh, via voltage control. Let's maybe take that from the peak out. Thank <laughs> you. 
So in this video, we pulled from some of the threads in previous videos, again, namely the idea of a neuron, and then used that neuron at the heart of a patch and had a lot of different feedback going around the system and using integrators as a sort of regulation device. So pulling from all these cybernetic ideas around feedback and uh, the AI idea of the neuron to create a little ecosystem here that we can start to think of as something that's beginning to learn and beginning to adapt to changes in its environment. And that is the heart of the cybernetic idea. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please take a look at my Patreon. I feel like a bit of a um, empty suit because there's nothing really there, but it seems like the best way uh, to support this work if you are enjoying it, and I do really appreciate that support. Uh, I really do not want to have to chase the YouTube algorithm and uh, influencer racket here. So just a basic support is really, really helpful, and uh, hope to keep doing these videos for you anyway, and I hope you keep on enjoying them. So thanks, and see you in the next video.